Welcome back. We're ready, primed and ready to roll. Uh, you can catch us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handles. You can catch Jay Wayne at Jay Wayne's World. You can catch Big Co at Dynasty Big Co. I'm at IMC Myers. We're uh, we're poised and ready to go with you know kind of a same same ish player kind of uh, seeing where same you same ish argument. Him. Sure, exactly. We're gonna go Kenyon Drake, and we're gonna kind of go with the two one two two to to one eight range. And w- what would you do? Is it is that is that a fair question? Sure. Because I know some people I've heard won't give up a two at all for Kenyon Drake, which I think is just plain out silly. I don't know what you're looking at or watching. Well, I had to go listen to the John Kelly interview on the uh, F3 podcast, and those boys said they weren't happy about giving up a two. So I had to completely disagree with that and go forward from there. Just pretend like I didn't even hear that. Uh who doesn't? Get, how, why would you not give up a two for Kenyon Drake at this point? Same reason why you wouldn't give up a two for Tevin Coleman at this point, right? And Drake's not even a handcuff like, like if, Tevin Coleman is. Well, first of all, <laughs> if you think you're that good in the second round, you do we not understand that professional M, NFL GMs get this wrong in the first round? Oh, for sure, all I the mean, time. That's, that's what it is. Like the hit rate is less than the bust rate. You know, like they just they mess right. up more than they get it right. So Kenyon you think, put so much down on film on an NFL field, right? That how can you not take that over something you've never and, seen on an NFL? And field? they re- like, I mean, so everyone's in the like we're all in on on a two for sure. Obviously, right? well, he's got a seventy eighty p startup value. This is average, obviously, and one dude in these drafts get, took him at fifty, and then he fell back to seventy seven and all that good stuff. So. So average uh, value of seven. Everyone's startup. cool with pretty much going all the way up to like one nine, one eight. Yeah, we had this conversation a while ago, like November when he was doing his after, thing. Yeah, I think like we after on two weeks, nine. after he had scored, you know, he had taken the the reins of that offense for like two weeks. We came on and did you know a solid twenty plus minutes on Kenyon Drake and and where we would what we would give up in a rookie draft and then what we would do as far as players and, and trading you know we, we threw go go check out that episode it was really awesome we're bringing it back around here because he's kind of a hot topic here there's mixed reviews on yeah, he's been all over the place big coast seen him traded for like a one six one seven seen him traded for seconds so saw somebody give up two first rounders for him a first this year and a first next year which i thought was crazy um i but talked ooh, you off first, the ledge a little though right but here here's the thing i when when this conversation came up I was think I you know Kenyon Drake, D- Damian Williams gets hurt week twelve. Kenyon Drake has his breakout. It was second half of the season, like a couple running backs last year. So Kenyon Drake breaks out week thirteen, fourteen, fifteen has some good games. Weeks thirteen and fourteen were crazy good, running the ball, catching the ball, just tearing it up, right? Yeah. And but Damian Williams had gotten hurt. They had traded Jay Ajayi a couple weeks before that. And sometimes in the NFL. You find yourself. That's why it was the zero running back theory for a couple of years because he, it, people people just come up out of nowhere and just play good running back in the NFL for a couple of weeks at a time. They're shooting stars. Much different than a wide receiver position, right? So I'm looking at this as like, all right, well, in week 13 when he breaks out, Sonoris Perry, whoever that is, gets five carries, and Jakeem Grant, which is a, a, an explosive player, gets one carry. The next week, Marquise Gray, whoever that is, gets one carry. And everything else all along in those two games goes th- in the running back position goes through Kenyon Drake. And I'm like, well, quantity over quality, right. You know, So Kenyon Drake is a lone man standing in the Dolphins' backfield for a couple weeks, and he goes and blows up. But then Casey hits me with some efficiency stats with Kenyon Drake. Just you know, it sort it by from week 12 on when he gets a chance to, to, to be the man. And maybe it's not quantity over quality. Maybe it's quantity and quality. So now I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to pump the brakes and sit back and, and listen open-minded about what Kenny and Drake did. Well, I mean, as like to what you were saying, like, you know, he's the last man standing or whatever, when I can understand It that. happens. But That's what, a true thing what in you, NFL. What, one thing that you should be looking for at the end of the season is somebody who from week 12 to week 17 got a shot and ascended in that shot. That should be somebody you're really interested in adding to your team because it's like – that maybe maybe their year was over or whatever, or they wanted to give somebody a shot, and he got a shot and and did well. That's somebody who I typically catches my eye a little bit, and then you you when you do kind of narrow this all down and sort it through twelve through seventeen, like Jay Ajay is the only person with a higher elusive rating than huh. than Kenyon Drake, which is you know kind of funny, silly, um, but on that's funny on he's got 50 attempts logged and Kenyon Drake has 91 attempts logged and he's only a few percentage points behind right Jay Ajayi in there right. and then you want to talk about you know when you start going through all these um 
little columns here, it's Kenyon Drake and Alvin Kamara in every single one of these things. And Kenyon Drake's the so leader in the about, clubhouse on a lot of these. You're talking um, about like signature stats on PFF. Yeah, all, all those kind of things. Like Kenyon Drake has 10 more receptions than, uh, or uh, Alvin Kamara has 10 more receptions from week 12 through 17. Um, but the... Uh, he got 50 Alvin less Kamara. carries than, than Alvin Kamara, but he also has 50 more carries than Alvin Kamara. And and on those 50 carries, like his yards after contact per for, per attempt are at 4.1, and and Kamara's are at 3.7. And missed tackles, like right. Kenyon Drake on rushes has 19 missed tackles. Alvin Kamara has 10. Obviously, a little bit different sample size there, 91 to 43. But still, like this is a guy he on missed tackles on receptions. Same amount, six per for Kamara right. and for Drake. Like he's just a guy who got his chance and did everything you wanted to see with his chance. And oh, by the way, like all through free agency and everything else they could have done, they only added Frank Gore. <laughs> right. Like, well, it, they, and we'll get to that in a second. But. Right. But and while we were looking through all those stats and you were showing me those stats about Tevin Coleman, you were say, it, like Kenyon Drake just kept popping up at the top. And one one thing I'll say is. Alvin Kamara's season last year was like the 2016 Falcon season. Ridiculously right. efficient. And everybody was talking about Kyle Shanahan leaving, and even if he didn't leave, there's no way the Falcons could replicate that efficiency, and they did not. And they're, everybody's trying to say right now that Alvin Kamara, there's no way he can replicate that efficiency, and he probably won't. Right. His quantity might go up, and it probably will because he's not he's coming in as a, as a second year, and the first couple games, he wasn't really in the, play, play in, you know, wasn't in the game plan as much as a rookie. So... Kamara's going to go up and he probably lose a little bit of efficiency, but he probably still be pretty badass. But the point of all that is, is Alvin Kamara. I mean, yeah, Alvin Kamara versus Kenyon Drake, week twelve to seventeen. If Ken, Kenyon Drake being in those efficiency metrics beside him, much less in front of him on if, the Dolphins. That's what I'm saying. Not on the Saints. Not with Drew Brees and Michael Thomas and and Mark Ingram and and the and and Sean Payton's offense and the way that the running backs just crush it out of the backfield for the Saints. On the Dolphins, with only Jarvis Landry to be to speak of, with Jay Cutler no less, you know, right. like for Kenyon Drake to be mentioned in the same category and be ahead of Alvin Kamara in a handful of those efficiency ratings you so showed me, I was I, my eyes were open. So if you then want to get into a little bit more of like the counting stats, quote unquote, which you know some people don't hate, get whatever. me started on the we'll, counting we'll, stats. We'll save that argument for another day. Okay, but courtesy of Graham Barfield for digging all this up so I didn't have to do it because this is normally something that I would dig through and spend the time doing but he he got me a 13 through 17 on a tweet snap snap rate 86 percent 91 which was my point right 86 percent snaps because everybody's hurt sure your point is he did well with it right that's okay. what I'm all saying right. all right was great with it 91 right. carries the sixth most from 13 to 17 uh 440 yard rushing yards 444 rushing yards number one 4.1 yards after contact, number one. 17 receptions, number 13. 150 receiving yards, number 14. 88.4 PPR points, eighth. Like, yeah. So he did work with, with what he had. Right. And all you can do is seize the opportunity that's in front of you. I yep. don't care if everyone else is gone. He looked great doing it. Right. Like, <laughs> it's not like he was just some schlub. Like, he's yeah, not, right. you know. <clears throat> I'm not saying Alfred Blue's the schlub, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, Alfred Blue goes out, or uh, Lamar Miller goes out in week. 15, 16, and 2016, and Alfred Blue comes in and just gets the carries and looks like a, a normal running back. But Kenyon right. Drake looked explosive. <clears throat> Alfred, Alfred Blue doing what he was doing. One touchdown run and helped me win a championship. Kenyon Drake looked ridiculous. I mean, he's like a human joystick. He was making dudes look silly. All kind of dudes missing in the backfield. Cat's awesome in space and he's grinding it out. And I mean, we talk about the Dolphins' offense versus the Saints' offense, and I know there's a lot less offensive weapons there in Miami, but it is a creative. X's offensive O's coordinator or, or Adam head Gase. coach Adam calling Gase. plays over there, yes. right? We got to. That's something that factors into my liking of Kenyon Drake is sticking in this Gase offense, right? True. The, the Texans, right? They didn't like trade away their, you know, running back to see what they had in Alfred Blue. Like the, the Dolphins were ready to give up Jay Ajayi to see what they had in Kenyon Drake, right? right? And so, and then he comes in there and just crushes they it. They could have I mean, easily re signed Damian Williams for cheap. Right. Chose not to. Good point. Good Let point. him go. Because um, Damian Williams, for everything that he doesn't get credit for, is super underappreciated. And when he's in the game, he usually does well. Right. And to go back to the elusive rating and all these signature stats from PFF, which I don't want to get too caught up in, but, uh, you know, people just, like it. Just they to point like it stats. out, like, JHI was at 106 on 50 carries or whatever. 
Kenyon Drake was at 94.9, and then Alvin Kamara is the next guy underneath them at 79.2. So that's a pretty big gap yeah. in between the elusive rating, which is the column that I have sorted at the moment. Just to, you know, again, what, put that like when he, it wasn't just like he was getting his chances and it was just all so volume based. That's the only reason he was good. He was, he was good because he was doing work with his touches well, right. and, and being elusive. Right. Exactly. Well, Jay Wayne just said he was out there looking like a human joystick. And when you showed me those stats, like that's the thing is like not any, I don't think to my eyes and I watched a ton of saints because I did draft Alvin Kamara all over the board last year, pat myself on the back. I don't think anybody in the NFL looked as elusive and nasty and, and just re- tackle breaking happy as Alvin Kamara. Nobody could put their hands on him. And so you give me some stats from, you know, Pro Football Focus who has been, they've been at this a while and they're actually, they're the leader in these types of stats right now. And for them to go out and show Kenyon Drake backing up what Jay Wayne said, he looks like on tape, you know, that you have to look at Kenyon Drake and say, this dude just did some work yeah. with Jay Cutler and, and Jarvis Landry moving the chains. Right. Like that's right. what it, what else has the defense got the key on? Fifth and breakaway percentage when you when you sort by that column. So yeah. again with the with the uh but, percentage of yards that come of runs of fifteen yards or more. So at five yeah, on this the dude up. is another guy, just like Tevin Coleman, can make your day in one play. It's the same right. it's a pro they're Sign the same, me up. same size. Same, right. same he's actually kind of a little bit bigger. Stature. He's six one two ten. I believe Tevin Coleman's like six foot two ten. Yeah. Two or five or something. But I will I like to play devil's advocate because I don't like that we we get credit a lot of times around here for not leaning one way. We'll give you both sides of the argument and people like that, so we're gonna continue doing that. In week sixteen, they go to Arrowhead and the Chiefs obviously went in there saying we're gonna make Jay Cutler beat us. The Chiefs are playing for the playoffs, no less, and the Dolphins don't have a chance, so it does matter. But he gets held to 5.7 fantasy points. Left a little Arrow. bad taste in your mouth. In week 16, in your championships, he gets 5.7 PPR points. The Chiefs shut him down. No, Only a couple yards rushing. No passes caught. They're like, hey, this is, you know, the weeks 14 and 15, he's playing against division rivals, which what does that mean? We don't know, but the Patriots beat him one week and, you know, week 12, come back in week 14 and lose a, a, a fun game, but they really, they got beat from the beginning Patriots put on 10 points in the fourth quarter but the, the Dolphins just opened it up early on that on the on that game and so again I'm not trying to rain on the parade for for Kenyon Drake here but for a couple of days there for a couple of weeks you got the new guy he's hot on the block Casey just told you how hot he was he was literally unstoppable but week 16 the Chiefs are trying to make the playoffs getting down to the wire there it happens the Dolphins don't have anything to really play for and the Chiefs shut him down so I'm not saying he came out here and he turned into Le'Veon Bell all of a sudden and, he, and nobody can shut him down, but, you know. Le'Veon Bell gets shut down every once in a while, too. Well, Le'Veon Bell's got Big Ben and and, and Antonio Brown right, keeping right. the defense and on And his shutdown is still probably 25 15 PPR points. points. <laughs> right, yeah. So, the, the, but, and he, they did get him in week 16 and there was no no catches, uh, three targets. But, um, but overall, I mean, the PPR floor of this guy is, was, is really what's mostly appealing. It was tremendous. Because he's so smooth in the passing game. Like, it's just, it's all hands. You can line this dude up out wide. They were sending him on go routes and mm-hmm. slants and ins and outs and so, screens. Like, he was, he's just so fluid sure. and smooth in the passing game on top of being able to break away from the running back spot. Well, I know Casey's about to say something. So, let me get you. Can you, you got some injury history on this guy to prep up before while Casey goes off? Well, on I just wanted to, to get about? into the Frank Gore, you know, kind of kind of talk here about. There's not a ton of. I mean, he had he had a hamstring strain and a knee strain in 16. Uh, I don't, that's that's what I'm seeing on Pro Football or a uh, uh, player profiler. Well, the reason I bring it up is because I mean, I I liked I liked Kenyon Drake coming out and you know I can. Yeah, a lot of people did in a deep dynasty league. He's on someone's team. He's been on no doubt team. about it. Casey and I traded a second rounder in the eleventh round of a startup draft in FFPC two years ago when he's a rookie to get a shot and have him and put him on our team. But everybody knows FFPC are short benches and his injuries and stuff in his rookie season ended up getting cut out, cut out of there. And he was probably on a lot of people's benches in a short bench on, on in a lot of. Uh, free agency wires in a short bench league. I know a lot of people paid, you know, good fab budget for him to pick him up in FFPC after he started breaking out last year if you weren't smart enough to pick him up a couple weeks before that. But, you know... And how, could I, you, how could you be? You know, you didn't know a guy was getting traded. No, you couldn't You couldn't have known that, but he did put like a six catch to game on paper a couple weeks before week 12. But well, he, he had a couple solid PPR games here. I liked him coming out of... I liked him coming out of Bama because he was the running back that was 
returning kicks and that type of thing. When you know, take it to the house. Trying Did to find, Clemson, man. trying to find somebody that is, is electric enough to be called the in, in, the kick returner, which was my argument. My argument for the puts Saquon Barkley over the top, the two hundred twenty eight pound running back that returns kicks in college, just puts him over the top for me. But so Kenyon Drake was doing that coming out, and Casey and I liked him enough to give up a second in a start in a startup for him, and then injuries played it out, and he didn't remain on our team. But for, for go, going forward, we, for sake of this discussion, uh, just like we said with Tevin Coleman, I mean, you, you'd be you'd be foolish not to give up a late first round pick to get Tevin to get Kenyon Drake on your team. I got, you've and seen it already. You'd be Again, foolish. The same argument. You'd be, right. You'd be you'd be exact foolish. Same argument. Absolutely foolish to let. Frank Gore scare you off of investing in Kenyon Drake. Right. I'm not saying. So let's talk about Frank Gore. The for inconvenient a second. And, and what, truth. And what you think, you know, what you think Frank Gore does to the value of Kenyon Drake? Because I see it as that was the best case scenario for right. if I'm a Drake owner, I'm like, oh, good. They it's just Frank got Gore. Frank Gore. Like, I understand, like you know, Frank Gore has been really solid, and you're, everyone's been expecting him to fall off a cliff or whatever. But like, I can't see Frank Gore coming in and being like what he just was in Indianapolis over right. there. Like Kenyon Drake's get, not Marlon Mack. Right, you're going to give Kenyon Drake his opportunities. What you did just do is you brought in a guy at the end of his career who's ready to retire, trying to break some records. He's Absolutely. From, went That's, to Miami. He, and what he's going to do is he's an awesome pass protector, and yep. he could teach Kenyon Drake how to do that. True. On third and one, they're in a single player out there that I would rather hand the rock to than Frank Gore because he point. will absolutely get you that third and one that you have to have because his pad level is absolutely Inches ridiculous. I have never seen anything like it. Good point. So he can he can add a lot to the Miami Dolphins and but all it's, the off the field a, preparation right. stuff too. It's yeah. coming home to Miami. It's it's all that kind of stuff. It's a good solid veteran leader for Kenyon Drake. Um, I, you know, he, he I, Gore's going to get his opportunities. Like Kenyon Drake doesn't need to come in here and carry the load like he just carried for from from week thirteen right. on or whatever. Doesn't need twenty five carries. Right a game. with the efficiency you called out, he could do very good for himself. Give in him an fifteen, out, give, 16, give him the Alvin Kamara and role targets, and be right. super right. excited about it. To to piggyback what you just said, when the season starts, Frank Gore's going to be thirty five years old. Okay, I completely agree. And and that's my number one thing about Frank Gore, and probably why the Colts didn't want to bring him back is because they he'd been around for a while. The obli- do- feeling obligated, exactly feeling obligated to give him carries to get him through these benchmarks and get him over some extra some some last second records here before he bows out because he probably was one of the favorite guys in the clubhouse. He's one of the best football players, even though he's thirty four years old. Like the Colts are like Colts are like we need to let this guy go because we don't want to have to we we want to move forward wanna, with our team, right? But the, you, I didn't even think about it like that. The, the role of mentorship that he could give to not only the entire team, but the running back room that Frank Gore would bring in there is an absolute professional fan running favorite back. automatically. Obviously, the Miami fan favorite automatically. But to come in there as the old man, being 35 years, he's not a quarterback. Break he's not going to play to Florida. in a Miami uniform. Right. Basically, the running backs coach. But yes, come in there, be the on field game day running backs coach. He's going to get some carries, like Casey said. He's going to get an opportunity to play. They wouldn't have brought him in to sit him on the bench. But he's not going to ruin Kenyon Drake's value. Right. And if, if there is some magical 35-year-old resurgence out of Frank Gore, Kenyon Drake's going to be absolutely serviceable, serviceable to an RB2 Tevin Coleman-type value. And if it just so happens that t- t- Frank Gore limits Ke- Tevin, uh, Kenyon Drake's value enough this year so he's not absolutely crushing it, then you're going to be okay. Kenyon Drake's very young man, and this team is moving forward. They just let go of Sue because they were tired of his antics. And Adam Gase, to Jay Wayne's you know, point there. Moved on from Pouncey. They're, right. They're trying to turn this thing and say, hey, let's go win some ball games, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the highest, most expensive, talented guys we can find. Let's play like a team. Bring in Frank Gore, teach us, teach us how to play. So it, then, then in the draft, they have pick 11, obviously. Not a running back. Not a running back. Can't be. They have too many holes. Again, then second round, pick 42 overall. Why would you can't be not running Not much back. of a chance that they're going running back there. Like right. They, again, tons of other issues on this team. Yeah. Right. So then you move into the third round, pick Could 973 be. overall, which you can never say never. no yeah. there, which, you know, may, maybe it does happen. But then you have one more fourth rounder, and it's a six and a seven and a seven or, so, right. or something well, they along have, those lines. They have lines. two fourth rounders, but one of them is going to the Rams. They have a sixth rounder, but that one's going to the Rams. Right. 
Um, and then they got two seventh rounders. So they, they could add a running back, but I don't think it's going to be anybody. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of running backs coming out sure. of this class. So if one falls and they like the guy, I can't, can't blame them. Maybe right. they take a, 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 a fourth round flyer on a back or maybe a third round. But I, if, if it's not in the third or, right. you know, once it gets into the fourth, you know, obviously you can still get good talent at the running back position in the fourth. But if it gets into the sixth or the seventh, like he's not any threat to take over Kenyon Drake's role right off the rip. And even at, even at third and fourth, what Kenyon Drake just did and Frank Gore being in that room, he would have to be absolutely lighting up yeah. uh, training camp and be undeniable. Uh, as a as a starter, completely agree, and I just I don't see him going that route with Kenyon Kenyon Drake breaking out. Frank Gore's the ultimate insurance policy. I just think they got too many holes to just be drafting. Uh, right. Well, well, you know he's the inconvenient truth for a reason. Like yeah. if if they needed him, they know they could lean on Frank Gore. Right. So that I don't think like you said, there's plenty of other spots, and I mean my boy Clements undrafted last year. It happens yeah. all the time. Like you don't have you could bring in in this deep class, you could bring in a running back sixth or seventh round, no problem. Chris that, Carson. That you could yes, exactly. That you could rely on if you had to. Just sign a veteran if you needed to. All right. Well, I think that's that was a good healthy conversation. Let's let's wrap that one up, and we'll come back with with one more to uh, end the day. For your pleasure.